Hello, my fellow Ripplers. This is Chris Miles, your cash flow expert and anti-financial advisor. Welcome to our show that's for you. Those of you that work so hard for your money and you want your money to start working harder for you right now. You want that freedom, cash flow, and prosperity today, not 30 or 40 years from now, but right now. So you live that life that you love with those that you love. But most importantly, it's not just about getting rich, it's about living that rich life, isn't it? It's about having that ability to create a ripple effect through the lives of others. Because as you are blessed financially and in all ways, you can share those blessings with others. Guys, thank you for allowing me to tune in, share this ripple effect through you. Pre appreciate you guys binging, sharing, and, and really making this podcast amazing. Because, man, uh, some of the questions you guys have been sending us, some of the people are coming our way saying, Chris, we need help. That's exactly what we're here for. We are here to create a ripple effect through your lives. Will you be one of the 1,000 people by the year 2030 financially independent? That is up to you. You can find out by going to moneyripples.com. Click on the passive income calculator and see what you can create in the next 12 months. So check that out. Chris Miles was able to retire twice by the time he was 39 years old, but he's not content to just enjoy his own financial freedom and peace of mind. Chris wants you to have your own ripple effect so you can live free today. He's not the financial advisor you expected. He's the anti-financial advisor you deserve. He's jumping behind the mic right now, ready to make waves. Here's Chris Miles. So guys, I, I want to kind of further this conversation about investing, right? What do real investors do like Warren Buffett? And specifically today, we want to talk about, does diversification really work? Is diverse, diversification really what everybody says it is? Because as traditional financial advice, they always tell you, you should diversify, right? And what's their answer? Their answer is buy mutual funds. And now they'll even say, if you buy one mutual fund because you buy all these little companies, you're buying tons of them. And this is what I taught as a financial advisor too back in the day. They would say, you buy all these little companies and voila, some go up, some go down, but at least you don't lose money as much. The truth is you still lose money. Why? Because you're not really diversified. <laughs> because you're buying in the same asset class of equities, stocks and things like that. And yeah, maybe you put some bonds in there and things like that. But as we learned in the last recession, People still lost money in bonds and in stocks. It didn't matter where you turned, you were losing money. Right now, many of you have already lost a good percentage of your money if you're still in the stock market today. Now, if you're out of it, good job, way to go, way to preserve your money. But those of you that are in the market right now, you're already looking at possibly almost a 20% loss, maybe more if you're not even getting the market returns. Especially when you have fees coming out from advisors that really don't advise you anyways. So I wanna talk about diversification because what is it really? So let's turn back to like we talked about last week with Warren Buffett, who, you know, is one of the most amazing investors ever. Doesn't mean he's infallible. Doesn't mean he's perfect. Um, I don't agree with 100% of everything he says. But then again, I always have to question my own beliefs to say, well, do I believe this or not? Is, is my way always the best way? Or is maybe, he, maybe he's wiser. Maybe he's smarter about certain things than I am. I'm always open to that change. So I want to talk about his quote about diversification, because this is where people get really confused if they listen to him versus listen to financial advisors, because he'll say right here, his quote says this diversification as practiced generally, this is talking about how most people do it with mutual funds makes very little sense for anyone that knows what they're doing. It is a protection against ignorance. <laughs> so what he's saying is because you have no clue what you're doing. This is a great way to protect yourself by just dabbling a little here and everywhere. It's, uh, so I'll come back to that in a second. Now, there's also Robert Kiyosaki. I remember I was, I can't remember which book it was of his, but he said diversification is like buying five used cars because you don't want, you want to make sure at least one of them is not a lemon. So you buy five used cars to make up for that. From a practical standpoint, you'd say, yeah, why would I buy five used cars just in case one or two of them are lemons and I still have three good ones to base it off of, right? Good point. Uh, my favorite quote is by Mark Cuban. Many of you guys might know him from, from Shark Tank. You might know him as being the owner of the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, Mark Cuban said this. <laughs> his, his thing is, quote, diversification, that's for idiots. <laughs> I also like what he says too. quote, buy and hold is a crock of, I'll stop right there. We'll keep it PG, but you can imagine the filler word that goes in there. Um, so he doesn't even like buy and hold. He doesn't like, you know, buy and hold on to stocks. And he's definitely, is not a big fan of diversification. 
So why are all these investors saying diversification is bad when other people are telling you diversification is good? And where's the boundary? You know, how do you know what kind of diversification you have? Does that mean we put all our eggs in one basket? Does that mean we put all of our chips into one thing? Is that what they mean? Oh, no, definitely not. So let's go deeper. Now, Warren Buffett, when he talks about this, and same thing with Robert Kiyosaki, you know, with Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Uh, and really, if you even go deeper into what, what Mark Cuban says, they kind of have a similar theme here. What they're really saying is this, is that when you don't know what you're doing, just throwing your money at everything is a bad strategy. And I want you to think about it from this, the used car example, right? Because let's just say that out of the, the five used cars you buy, let's just say only one is a lemon. Say one doesn't work. That means you still have four good ones. Could you say, hey, I've got four good cars here. This is great. I can make some money on this or whatever. Well, okay, you could. But remember, if you think about it from a monetary standpoint, if one is bad, it's worthless. So it brings your overall return down. And you might say, well, it gives me some safety and certainty. Okay, good. I'm glad it gives you some safety and certainty. But knowing that in the stock market sense, like with mutual funds, say that three of them go up, two go down. You're like, oh, good, I didn't lose money. Yes, but you didn't really make a lot of money either. Those three winners, you're now regretting you didn't have all your money there. But again, because you were quote unquote ignorant, and I say this in a respectful way, I'm not saying that you know, you're know you a moron, right? I'm not saying you're an idiot for diversifying, uh, not like Mark Cuban saying. What I am saying is we're looking at this from a standpoint of, hey, that lowered your returns. Vice versa, you might lose, you might lose less too but you're not also earning anything. So maybe a few of them won and a bunch of them lost. You might be feeling grateful you lost a little bit less. But the truth is people really don't see that because when I look at people's portfolios and we've looked at this for really now, it's been 20 years, <laughs> two decades that I've been looking at people's investments over time, okay? Whenever you see the stock market do something, people's returns are typically less. Even if they buy the S&P 500, which is supposedly supposed to be diversified, they still get a little bit less because there's a little bit of fees coming out. Here's the other issue is that the S&P, to give you a good example, the S&P 500 is not equal across the board with the stocks they have. There's a weighted average there. They're weighted based on the size of the company, more sway with the market goes back and forth. So it's based on a total amount of money. So say, for example, just using easy numbers, it's not real numbers. But say that Apple is worth $1 billion. But another company, say uh, ExxonMobil, is worth $50 billion, right? And okay, great. Well, now it sounds like that ExxonMobil, even if it goes down and even if Apple goes up, what's going to happen is you're going to lose a lot more money. Vice versa. If, you know, all of a sudden, even if, you know, even if ExxonMobil goes up and Apple goes down and maybe every other stock goes down, but because ExxonMobil is worth 50 billion and the other is only worth 25 billion and they go down, but that goes up. It doesn't matter. It goes up. So you can't really gauge what the real market's doing. You're not really diversified. This is why they have the whole FANG index and stuff, right? Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, right? All these big companies that really, really control the bulk of the market. So really you're not diversified there either. I mean, yeah, you're not in one stock. That's better. Some of you guys that might be buying one stock, yeah, you are taking some big risks there. You are gambling, especially if you're not somebody who controls that investment. You're not somebody on the board of directors to say, hey, I know this is a good company. It's managed well. I'm willing to put my money into it. You don't know that. Yeah, you might say, hey, well, it's been good. It's got a good track record. Yay. Wave your little banner. You know, woo. -hoo. Who cares? It doesn't matter because that can change in a heartbeat. That's what we've learned about anything with the stock market. Heck, Tesla can tank in a day just because the news coming out, right? All these things can change and, and manipulate stock prices. You're not really diversified. So how can you really be diversified? How do you really know? And, and, and should you be diversified at all? Now, let's go deeper in what they say. Now, they will buy into certain companies or certain industries. Remember, Warren Buffett buys companies. He does not trade stocks. Um, this is also somewhat true of Mark Cuban. You know, Robert Kiyosaki is not so much of a, a stock investor, although he might dabble in it from time to time. Mark Cuban, actually, even in 2011, when he said that diversification is for idiots. Um, he was actually saying that during the last recession, when it was right about the time I was going to start pulling up again. He even said at that time, he says, you know what? I still think stocks are too expensive. So what did he do? He bought into Aussie bonds, Australian bonds, and he was, uh, you know, buy into like mortgage-backed securities, which got you know, hammered during the last recession because 
mortgages were just falling flat, right? The whole industry was, was a mess. That's when he decided to buy it. He saw an opportunity because it was horrible. People didn't want it anymore. Remember, if a stock is hot or if any investment's hot, you're probably too late. You're probably a little too late to the party, right? That's the thing. If you, if you hear about a party being awesome down, you know, down the street, you go and you drive there and get to the party, most likely by the time you heard it, it was already starting to slow down. You're late to the party. You end up losing. This is also true in the investing world. So when they invest, they invest in very specific categories. And what Mark Cuban actually said himself is he studied the heck out of it. He went deep into those things, really understanding that investment. Some of you might even say that's about crypto. Awesome. Great. Cool. Go deep. Go and go. And, and I've seen people that still make money, even when people lose money in crypto. Some people have made money in crypto because they went deep and they really understood that asset class. The problem is, and this is what financial advisors take advantage of, is that most of us don't want to become financial experts in certain areas. So as a result, we just kind of throw spaghetti on the wall and hope something works. That's not a good investment strategy. That actually is a good way to lose money or never to really make any money enough to create any real freedom. Now, people ask me, Chris, well, how are you diversified? You do a lot of investing in real estate. Well, are you really diversified? Well, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked because you know, you might look at that one asset class. You could say, well, Chris, if I'm in the, the paper asset space, you know, with equities, now understand with the paper assets, there's really four types of asset classes. One is business. This means even owning your own business or investing in businesses. This does not include stocks, by the way. This is actual business, like what Warren Buffett does. Two, real estate. Three, paper assets. And then four, commodities. Commodities are things like gold, silver, oil, corn, you know, those kind of things. So you look at those four asset classes, business, real estate, paper assets, and then of course, the last one is commodities. Now I try to invest in most of these asset classes, if not all of them. And eventually the, the point is you probably will get to the point where you invest in at least one area of all of these. Now, a paper asset could be something just like, you know, like life insurance, you know, like I have money in life insurance that does paper asset. It's not tied to a tangible property. It's a paper asset right? It's actually something that's more of a contract on paper, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, almost everything in financial, really everything a financial advisor offers you is a paper asset, but that's all they offer. Now there are a variety of things you can do in that space. Heck, we even talked about I savings bonds. That's a paper asset, different class. It's not like in the stock market, but it is a different thing you can do, right? There's so many different ways to be in paper assets. There's also a lot of different ways to be in businesses. You could have your own business. You could be a partner in business. You can be a silent partner. You could be an active partner. You could also own a franchise. You can be in lots of different spaces there. You could be an investor. Remember Warren Buffett, when he invests in businesses, he buys a controlling interest. One of the places he does not diversify, but he actually hones in on are furniture stores. He started in the furniture space. I remember reading the book uh, called How to Build a Business Warren Buffett Would Buy. And it was about the guy that sold him the stores called RC Willie. It's a furniture store actually really popular here in the mountain West of Utah, a little bit in Idaho and, and Las Vegas. Now RC Willie is a furniture store, but they're really more of a finance store. They do a lot of financing for furniture and things like that. And that's where they make a good chunk of their money. Well, he knew that business really well. He even told the owner of RC Willie when they were flying a helicopter over Vegas, the owner of RC Willie was trying to convince Warren Buffett to let him build a store in Vegas because they went in as partners together eventually. Buffett said, no. Buffett said, listen, I know this furniture business. I know the space. Las Vegas wouldn't work for you because you guys refuse to open on Sundays. And Sundays is one of the biggest furniture days in the business. So if you're not going to be open on Sundays, Las Vegas would not work for you. What did that owner Orsi Willie do? He went and opened a store in Boise. He said, listen, Boise is a very similar market to Las Vegas, similar demographics, um, even though they're in different places very similar. He's like, if I can get this to work, will you let me open a store in Vegas? And Buffett said, if you can get it to work, go for it. And uh, the guy even said, I'll put in my own money. He mortgaged his own house, put his own money for the store. So it didn't come out of Buffett's pocket. Buffett thought he was an idiot for doing that. And so he did the store. Now Buffett had very strict criteria. He says, listen, you got to hit certain sales revenue within six months. If you don't deals off the table, no Vegas. And you probably shouldn't have Boise either. Well, he did it. He surpassed his sales target. Um, they eventually did open a Las Vegas store. And at that, that grand opening, Warren Buffett said, you know what? I'm so glad I had this great idea of opening a store in Vegas. Obviously being sarcastic because that was not his idea. That was uh, Bill Childs, right? That was his idea. 
So the point is this, right? Is that Buffett knew that industry so well that he said, listen, this may not work. This is what we should be doing. He understood that business. He also is in the oil and gas space, right? He's in utilities, big on that. He's in insurance. He's actually owned insurance companies. He goes in specific markets. They are diversified, but he's not investing in everything. He's investing in very specific sectors and he buys into those businesses. He is a business investor. That is his, that's his asset class. That's his passion. That's his love. That's what he does. Real estate, you can do so many things in the real estate space. I mean, just among the things that we talk about, we don't go into much of the speculative type stuff. We like to stay more the kind of vanilla, um, boring, but the returns aren't boring. That's the good news. But they are very, very similar in nature. For example, one, we do like turnkey real estate. We like investments where you can actually go and have a property managed for you. You buy the property, you own it, you control it, which is huge if you're an investor, you like control and you get the tax benefits and everything else, but you don't manage the property. Somebody else manages it for you. So you're a little bit more hands-off. You're a passive investor there. We also have syndications like in the apartment space. Like I said before, apartments have been really um, a little too hot for too long you have to, if you're going to go in that space, you need to make sure right now you find an operator that is very, very stringent on their underwriting, on their policies and what passes their sniff test, so to speak. You need to make sure that there's also spaces like self-storage. Self-storage is considered recession resistant, not recession proof, but recession resistant because when people downsize, they'll often will downsize and move their junk into a self-storage unit. You know, we've only got raw land. That's something that I've been looking more into and, and actually been doing and enjoying it. You know, even outside or somewhat of a quasi one with commodities and real estate mixed together, um, there's even things where you can buy investments into land that's drilled, drilled for oil. Um, now, you can go into working interest ones where they, they're they doing more speculative drilling. I tend to stay away from those things. I tend not to recommend that kind of thing. But there are some that the drilling's already been happening you own the property, lease it to the oil companies and make money off of that. So it's real estate, but it is also based on the profits of what they're drilling and the money coming out of that, the royalties and everything else. That's one space you can do in the syndication space, right? So there's even ways you can kind of expand and go in different places there. And, uh, you know, short-term lending. We've talked about short-term lending before too. You can do short-term lending and, and be the bank for people that way. There's note investing and things with that. And there are really, I mean, there's even assisted living, even though that's been hammered during the COVID years, assisted living is another real estate space. And there are so many different varieties of things you can do, pre-construction, construction type of stuff you can be doing and make money in the real estate space. So when people say, Chris, well, you don't seem that diversified. Well, yeah, the bulk of my assets, especially the ones that are cash flowing are real estate, but I do have some paper assets. I do have some money in savings, very little. I've got also got a lot more money in my life insurance and things like that. Um, I've even got note, you know, certain types of notes and things like that, that will pay as more of a paper asset. You know, I do have things, I do have money with the oil investment where you have a little bit of commodities mixed with real estate, you know, and yes, uh, business. Hello. I mean, I, this is the number one business I can control and, and be able to make returns increase. So, uh, so I do love that. And I've even looked at doing franchises myself. Franchise is another option. Of course. Um, I didn't do it because I realized money ripples. I could put more focus here teach more people and help the mission continue and create that ripple effect. So this is where I am. This is where I've planted my flag and where I'm doing it. And this is one of my only active investments that I have, really, if you think about it. This and doing the infinite banking are our active investments within our business. Everything else that I do is more passive. So can you be diversified? Yes. Do I put all my eggs in one basket? No. Uh, do I put all my money with one person that I trust? No, I don't. I even will diversify among operators. But instead of just trying to say, hey, I'm going to invest with 20 different people or 30 or 40 different people, I might invest with maybe five or six people and that's it. And then just do different deals within, the, within those areas. That's kind of how I work. That's how I operate. And it's worked great because I can just focus on really understanding what they invest in and understand what they're doing, even if I'm not the one doing the investing, right? Focus on what they're investing in to ensure that I'm knowledgeable enough to know what to look for. but um, I don't have to be in the weeds with them. That is how you can diversify and yet still be focused and create better returns for yourself without just taking a gambler's mindset of hoping something works when in truth, you really don't make much of a return at all and you could still lose money. That is how most people operate. 
don't follow the masses and diversify, quote unquote, in just mutual funds, which aren't diversification at all. And whenever those tank, they all tank together. Stay in the space where you allow more control, more freedom to invest how you choose. You want to learn how to do that, especially if you got at least $200,000 you could be investing? Reach out to us and contact us at moneyripples.com today. Everybody make a wonderful, prosperous week. We'll see you later. Visit us online at moneyripples.com for more resources to help you fix money leaks and get your money working harder for you now.